Hi, I'm Nadine Pierre from Healthy You, Healthy Love. I'm a coach for smart, savvy women looking for united, sexy love. And in this video, I'm going to help you to navigate the early stages of dating so that you'll find yourself in a loving relationship, not in a going nowhere, no strings attached situation. The truth is not all relationships start the same. Some start casual and end up serious. Some start more serious and end up casual. Some start super slow and end up as great love affairs. Some start with a bang and fizzle fast, and some start fast and keep growing. Either way, no woman who's authentically looking for love wants to be a booty call, and this is what this video is all about. You see, in the early stages of dating, playfulness and fun is what both men and women need to feel they want to keep dating each other. And yet some people have a different idea of what this means. And instead of women being asked out on dates, they start to feel that a man is trying to booty call them by asking them over to their house. If you don't want to be a booty call and you want to take your time dating a man to get to know him, to see if he's a true match and a man of great character and not just a charmer, then this is how you do it. Firstly though, you need to understand why a man might ask you over to his place instead of suggesting to go out to meet up. You see, not all men who ask you over in the early stages are trying to booty call you. Perhaps he doesn't have a lot of money and would rather cook for you than pay restaurant prices. Perhaps he has a lovely home and wants to impress you with what he has. This is a typical male move to get you more interested in his status so that you're more interested in him. Maybe he's a great cook and wants to impress you with his culinary skills or number four, yes, he's not all that serious about you and just wants to hook up. If you've known him for a while and you trust that he will be a gentleman, you also trust that you have the willpower not to get it on with him sooner than you're ready, then sure, go over for dinner. But if you want to get to know him on neutral ground and avoid being treated as a fun time gal, then this is how you do it. Number one, establish his status. The way you respond to a man asking you over to his place has a lot to do with his financial situation. When I say this, it doesn't necessarily mean that you would expect to be treated differently by a man who's financially secure or not, though you do need to take this into consideration when you're navigating dating. Because as I mentioned earlier, the reason why he might ask you over rather than suggesting to take you out isn't always about getting hot and heavy with you. It could be his way of doing something nice for you without the expense. If you're interested in a guy with limited funds, you can gently decline the home date and suggest to do something with him that doesn't require any real expense. Go for a hike, an inexpensive restaurant, suggest a picnic, a trip to the beach, or perhaps a twilight beach walk and an ice cream. Of course, this situation may not appeal to all women as some women can feel like they're suppressing their lifestyle, particularly if they're high income earners themselves. It really comes down to what really matters to you. If money is not a huge deal to you, then you need to know how to work with this situation without him feeling like a failure or unable to keep up with you. If he says, hey, how about you come over to mine and we'll have dinner here? You could say, that sounds lovely, and yet I feel like getting outside in the fresh air. I've been in an office all week. Would you like to meet up for a walk this time? This costs nothing and allows you to spend quality time together with no expense. Number two, you're desperate and disempowered. When we're really desperate to be in love, we can tend to do silly things. You run the chance of being treated like a booty call the more desperate you are. You're more focused on getting some attention, any attention, than creating an actual relationship or friendship that could lead to a romantic partnership. When you accept crumbs, you get more crumbs. Some women believe that the more accommodating they are, the more understanding they are, the more available they are, no matter what time he contacts her, no matter whether he's suggesting to come over and snuggle on the couch, watch a Netflix show, whatever it is, they think that being around the man and just being available is going to ultimately see them in a relationship with the man. So they tend to be available as a booty kind of situation because they actually don't believe that perhaps the man would want to be with them and actually get to know them in any other way. So they become desperate and disempowered. So if you really want to get a man to ask you out, it's imperative 
that you believe that you're worthy of being dated, if you believe that you're deserving of great love, because when you don't, then you end up settling for crumbs and feeling miserable and always feeling like you're drawing the short straw. Which means if you're tired of simply feeding off the emotional scraps that someone's willing to give you and you really want the true intimate kind of love that you deserve, I have a brilliant free gift to help you identify any love blocks you might be facing that are stopping you from experiencing intimate and united lasting love. If you haven't got it yet, please click the link to this free gift right below in the description to find out what your romantic love syndrome block could be. Number three, you control the dating narrative. You get to choose how you date. No matter what a man's situation is, you can decide what you are and aren't willing to accept or go along with. A true gentleman will understand if you don't want to go to his house when you first meet. In fact, most men won't suggest it. And if they do, for one of those four reasons I mentioned earlier, you don't have to go. You control the narrative. You don't need to stress out or worry what he thinks if you say no and if worry about whether he gets offended. That's his problem. If you don't feel comfortable, you're allowed to say no. You're allowed to make another suggestion. You are allowed to navigate the dating exchange and how it plays out. A friend of mine was recently in this kind of situation. She was dating a guy and every time he suggested catch up, it was very much in a casual sense at his place. And I said to her, you don't need to go and see him. You don't need to hang out at his house. You can control the dating narrative. You can suggest, hey, I'd love to see you. Let's meet up in town and grab a bite to eat or let's go for a walk along the beach. Anything like that would have navigated things or uh, maneuvered the platform so that it became more of a dating situation rather than a hanging out, snuggling on the couch, Netflixing and whatever that would lead to. So you have the ability to do that and it can feel scary to actually request something different. As I mentioned earlier, when we're desperate and we're feeling like we really want to be in a relationship, we kind of feel like we just want to take anything because it's better than nothing else. But this is not actually true. Because if you do want to be in a relationship in a committed, wholehearted connection, then how it starts is often how it finishes. Of course, not in every situation, yet in many situations. So I'd love to encourage you to be bold enough, confident enough, and have the courage to actually share the way that you want the dating to go. And if he doesn't want to, then you know. Everything is about finding out more information. When you go against your own values, go against your own needs, then we end up frustrated and not normally getting what we really want. So if you do want that commitment, then it starts with you, not him. The next point is number four, it's okay to say no, this is not for me. This point is an extension of what I just shared. There is so much power in saying no. Saying no can change your whole life when it comes to dating. There is a difference between saying yes and ending up in a going nowhere relationship for months or even years and saying no from the very beginning. Your values matter, your time matters, your life matters, and who you spend time with has a lot to do with your everyday joy, your life fulfillment. So this is why it's so important in the early stages of dating, if you don't wanna be that booty call, if you wanna be treated in a way that is on the path to a relationship, then the art of saying no is imperative. And if you want to make sure that you're communicating and connecting with a man who's willing to commit and not just wasting your precious time, then I have something powerful to support you. It's my program called Never Lose Him. In this program, I teach you how to truly know your worth so you can have the courage to be treated like the queen that you are 
and unhook yourself from going nowhere dating and relationships. This program will help you to show up with men in a way that creates true partnership with the best types of men for you. Well, gorgeous, that's all I have time for today. Before Remember, only you are in charge of your happiness.